Coming up on Juice and Java, we recap this week's United Airlines drama. And Greg Mitelka will join us in studio to talk about Orange Seats and their upcoming big event. All of that and more coming up right now. Good morning, I'm Jeff Slauson. And I'm Kayla Spector. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Let's kick things off with the squeeze for this week's top stories. A video of a United Airlines passenger being physically dragged off an overbooked flight went viral this week. After United overbooked a flight that was getting ready to leave Chicago, they asked for volunteers to give up their seats in exchange for vouchers. No one volunteered. United randomly picked people to kick off the plane, and a doctor, who was apparently going home to see his patients, was forcibly removed and dragged off the plane. He suffered many injuries as a result, including a broken nose, sinus injuries, and two broken teeth. United CEO called this an upsetting event, and the company will be, will be doing further investigations. Now, they made a statement right after it, saying that they stood by their employees and that they had to reaccommodate one of their one of their people, right? Yeah, they made it sound like they didn't really care that this man was hurt. And, and then a few days later, they came out with a new yeah. statement saying that they're so sorry for what happened. Does yeah. that, do you feel like that's confusing for customers? I feel like they should have just apologized right off the bat, whether they thought they were right or wrong. You hurt a customer, and that he deserves an apology. The whole airline deserves an apology. There were people taking videos, people in other seats watching. And that's kind of traumatizing. Imagine You're on a plane. being on that flight. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? You're just watching somebody being dragged off. You could be next. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. It's insane. Yeah, like, they definitely should have released an apology sooner. And the poor customer, but I'm sure they're trying to figure everything right. out with right. him. And two Syracuse women's basketball players are heading to the WNBA. Guards Brittany Sykes and Alexis Peterson were picked in the draft on Thursday. Sykes will continue her career with the Atlanta Dream, while Peterson will go to the Seattle Storm. Both players were selected in the first two rounds, with Sykes going seventh, which is the highest a Syracuse player has ever been picked. As for Peterson, she went 15th. The two, were guards, the two guards were a big part of the Orange's 2015 run when SU reached its first Final Four and National Championship in program history. So I think it's really great to see SU get such national coverage. They're getting a lot of recognition for this, which, you know, women's teams usually don't. We're seeing it increasingly, but it's usually the men's teams that are covered more. And also, the women's teams, there's a very dominant aspect to it. UConn's just so good and so such a dominant force. However, Syracuse, when we first got here, was not a very good women's basketball team, and Coach Q's done a fantastic job with, with the team, and he's made them actually really well nationally recognized, and it's great to see players actually being drafted Yeah, their high. whole team has been built up so much in our past four years that it's great that they're doing so well and we get to watch it. It makes our school seem really great that it's supporting these sports as well. Yeah. And Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, was a key figure this week in passing the Excelsior Scholarship. The new scholarship promises free tuition for students whose households make less than $100,000 a year. It's estimated that 80% of households statewide will qualify for the scholarship. This will apply to state public schools, but not private universities such as SU. Students are required to take 30 credit hours every year and must live in New York State for the amount of years they receive the scholarship after graduation. Many politicians have expressed support for this new legislation, especially Hillary Clinton. So this is a great thing for all students looking to go to college. You know, you... This would, of course, happen when we're... Well, of course, but we do go to a private university, right, so true, either way, it wouldn't true. really affect us but unless we decided not to come to Syracuse four right. years ago, which I wouldn't change that. But it's good for other people in the I know state. this has been in the works, too, and this is something that's kind of a hot topic. People are on both sides, but for people that can't afford education, especially to go to SUNY schools, which have some great institutions, yeah. I think it's pretty great. I think it's great. It gives a lot more people many more opportunities, and I think... Everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves a good education. I would agree with you, and it's something that was discussed, so something being done is pretty good, I guess, about it. And LeBron James will be opening a public school for at-risk children in his hometown in Akron, Ohio. The school is set to open for third and fourth graders by 2018, but will expand to first through eighth, first through eighth grade by 2022. 
LeBron has also worked with the University of Akron to provide scholarships for students in his programs. The LeBron James Family Foundation has helped more than 1,100 kids in the past six years. LeBron said if we, get to, if we get to them early enough, we can hopefully keep them on the right track to a bigger and brighter future for themselves and their families. I love when athletes do this. Mm. Really giving back to the community that did so much for them. LeBron has been a great advocate for the Akron and Cleveland area. I think this is awesome. Well, he's giving so many kids a new opportunity. He's, it's great. It's the idea of some place that did well by you, you do well by it, right? Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know. You see a lot of athletes that are very selfish in their spending, and LeBron James has never been like that, and he's opening up a school. That's yeah. incredible. Well, it's also great when you see these few athletes that actually care about their communities, and they actually care about helping, right. which is really nice to see. It's something that you're, you're somebody that's looked upon, and mm -hmm. people look up to you. The people are wearing his jersey. So having some, imagine being a kid at that school. Yeah, well, you now know? all of these kids can look up to him and have him be a role model for them, and that's great steps to follow right. that's your hero and he's doing so much good it's it's unbelievable i'm really excited about this story fear factor it's coming back to mtv and it will be hosted by ludicrous the retired rapper made a 12 episode deal with viacom and will be producing the show as well the new fear factor will have some changes the show will now focus on anxieties and fears of the modern day generation's tensions instead of creating challenges that would gross out viewers Ludacris says he is very excited to work with Fear Factor and that this will be the first of many great projects that he will do with MTV. The show will premiere on MTV on May 30th at 10 p.m. I love the original Fear Factor. It's, it's kind of funny. See, I have trouble watching it because I get grossed out so easily, so I think I may be able to watch it now because you're not seeing people eat disgusting things. Right. And like that grosses me out so much. So I think maybe this will be better for me. I agree. I think it, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they change it and how fans react to that change too. Because Fear Factor was huge. Yeah. Way back in the day, or way back in the day, but you know, 10, 10 years ago or so, it was huge. Everybody loved Fear Factor. So now that it's coming back and you have somebody like Ludacris who I feel it like could be a good host, I mm -hmm. think this is going to be really good. Well, now it's going to have a different spin on it, which can also make it even better because we have something new to watch. Even though it's the same, it's also different. Any so, excuse to see Ludacris on TV yeah. too? I'm all in for and it. Another new thing coming up, friends, is now coming back to New York City. 13 years after the hit TV series ended, the show will return to its roots as an off-Broadway musical. The musical will, will reference some of the show's most well-known and hilarious moments. Some of the song titles include The Only Coffee Shop in New York, We Were on a Break, and We'll Always Be There for You. The production will be titled Friends the Musical and will be penned by Bob and Toby McSmith. So... I think this is amazing. I'm a huge Friends fan. And there are so many people of our generation and of other generations that love it too, and I think this could be great. It's crazy how Friends has been so relevant for so long mm -hmm. too. Like our generation has loved it, and yeah. we didn't really grow up with it. It was kind of made when we were right. born. Right, so. so thanks to Netflix, it's become this great big thing. So I don't know, do you, are you excited? Would you go to see the musical? I would definitely go to see the musical. I'm having a, a little trouble figuring out how it's gonna add up to the show, because it's. There's so many seasons, so how do you make a musical out of this huge TV series that just has so much going on in it for so many years? And to be honest, Friends is really about nothing, too, so <laughs> like, the musical's going to have to be something like that. My, my hope is that it feels just like a you know, three-episode long Well, I'm thinking show. it will just be something funny to watch that right. you can just kind of enjoy. I'm with you on that, absolutely. And coming up after the break, Greg Mitelka of Orange Seeds will be talking to us about the big event. Monique Euster is also in studio to tell us what to check off your Syracuse bucket list before graduation. Stay with us. Are you good to try? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city.
They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to Juice and Java. Every year, the Syracuse University Orange Seeds plan the largest student-run day of community service. Greg Mitelka is with us to tell us more about this year's big event. Thanks for being with us. So can you just explain exactly what the big event is? Yeah, definitely. So every year, Orange Seeds puts on the big event, which is the largest student-run day of community service on the entire Syracuse University campus. And this year, we're partnering with 12 different nonprofits at 15 different volunteer sites throughout the community and on campus such as Meals on Wheels, Hendricks Chapel, um, Salvation Army, the Boys and Girls Club. And really, we just really encompass our motto, which is stand up, give back. So standing up and giving back to the greater Syracuse community that we call home. And how does the community react to some of the things that Syracuse is doing with <clears throat> the big event? It, it's a great thing that these students are doing so much. So how does the community give back to that? Definitely. It's really like just a huge day of community service. And really, like we love to see the reactions of the different nonprofits and volunteer coordinators that we work with, and it's really just like a heartwarming experience. So what kind of um, volunteer events do you actually take part in for the day? Definitely. So for example, we're partnering with Thorndon Park, which is just down the road, and we'll be like doing some gardening and weeding for them as well. And then we're partnering with Meals on Wheels of Syracuse. We'll be doing some painting of like their volunteer offices and building. And then we'll be doing some cleanup projects at like Salvation Army and Boys and Girls Club. and. So as a student, how do you feel being able to do something that's so much larger than just being a student at Syracuse University? Yeah, definitely. So I've always been very passionate about community service and giving back. And I just feel like it's very nice to get off campus and like get off the bubble of the hill and really like give back to the community. So how did you get involved with this? Um, so Orange Seeds, it's a first year leadership and empowerment program for freshmen and transfer students at Syracuse University. And um, freshmen and transfer students are allowed to apply to Orange Seeds in the fall of their freshman or first year on campus. And after an interview process and um, stuff like that, you're then accepted in the Orange Seeds program. And we have a 24 student seed class with a 12 member e board and then a membership board. And for the first semester, so all fall and winter, we're working at different, volunteering at different nonprofits throughout the Syracuse community. And then starting um, in the spring semester, we start planning the big event. So are freshmen and transfer students the only ones allowed to participate in the big event, or is it offered to everyone on campus? Yeah, so the big event is open to students at, um, in all years at Syracuse University and SUNY ESF. And um, yeah, it's really open to anyone that just wants to stand up and give back. I like the idea that it's fr for more freshman geared too, because then that gives you a sense of being in this group and really doing something. You're doing something for something that's so great. So. Are students feeling that as well? Do they are they really excited about that with, with yeah, that being the case? Absolutely, absolutely. Even just our seed class, it's, this is like our big moment for our freshman year, and um, we've really just been working so hard to put on this event, and it's just going to be so rewarding. Are you able to continue being involved after your freshman year then? Yeah, definitely. So all seeds are able to either um, apply to be a part of the e board, which is the executive board, or apply to be mem on the membership board. And then you are if you're on the e board, you get like a mentee, and you're part of like the mentor mentee program. And membership board's also involved, and really everyone's involved in still the planning of the big event. It seems so, like it's going to be great. So, what are you looking forward to the most out of it? Um, I'm most looking forward to just like getting back to campus at the end of the day, and just like being like, wow, we just sent so many volunteers out in the community. We just made such a difference, and like, wow, it's it's over. <laughs> but, well, Greg, thank you so much. It seems it's really great to see students doing all that, and thank you for joining us this yeah. morning. It's yeah. been really that great. great. And don't change the channel because when we come back, Monique Euster will share with us how to spend our final few weeks here in Syracuse. Stay with us. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. 
One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Back to Juice and Java. Monique Euster is here with us to talk about what we should do during our final weeks here before graduation. Yes, I am. Thank you so much for having me today. Let's so, get it going, Monique. Let's do it. So we've been here for a couple of years. I know. We all hang out outside of this show, but there are definitely a few things that we have not gotten to do in the past couple of years. So personally, I think for me, climbing the water tower is my yep. number one thing that I've never gotten to do. What about you guys? Well, first of all, with the water tower, right? Explain a little bit on where it is in relation to campus and what you can do when you, once you're on top of it. Yeah, so you can you have to drive over, and then I know there's a couple of fences you have to hop and some <laughs> ladders you have to climb. I actually heard that right now they may have taken down one of the ladders, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this one. But then you get up there, and it's just a beautiful view of campus. People go at sunset, and there's just beautiful photo ops. You know, get your last photo ops at Syracuse University before get a nice you know, the dreaded graduation yeah. <laughs> date. <laughs> I know for me personally, I, I want to go to a Syracuse Chiefs game. I've heard that there's okay. so much fun and you can just kind of hang out and the tickets are cheap. You go on Thursdays, it's the dollar concessions, which I think okay. is really cool. So that's one that I want to do. I did a crunch game earlier in this year and that was a Maybe lot of fun. Maybe we'll have to do that I haven't done any of those things. <laughs> really? So I'm trying to do all of them. Yeah, definitely. What about you? Great. Anything that you specifically you know, want to do? The water tower was definitely on yeah. the top of my list. I've been wanting to go since freshman year, and I still haven't. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to do that. So, I'm trying to think of what else well, I would want to do. Me and my friends one night, we sat down at Fagan's, and we made a list of all the things that we want to do. I want to try every restaurant on Marshall Street. I I'm working my way through. Really? So but now there's a few new ones. Right. Yes. You know, we have a few new places that just popped up this year. So we have been here sushi. for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, so there are new ones on Marshall that you can mm -hmm. try out, and then there's also the ones around there. So that's actually a good one that we should totally. probably all try and do, yeah. is make sure that we get down to the Marshall Street when it, before it You know, even Armory forever. Square, too, all the restaurants there. You know, there's a few that we all always seem to go to, but there's so many more that we just never actually make it to. Definitely. You know, one thing I'm really upset about that I never got to do was slide down Crouse Hill on a I know. slide. In the snow. I've always wanted to do it. There wasn't enough snow this a year. A little too late for that now. I, I think we're some, getting more snow. I saw, you saw, never know I saw a few people trying it. It didn't seem like a <laughs> Well, one thing I would say though is for people that are graduating I would use Armory Square way more than I did. Would I you agree? Completely agree. I agree. I've always wanted to go out downtown down there now that we're 21 we're able to do that yep. but I've never gotten a chance to do it. Yeah most people don't make it there when mm -hmm. they're going out they think you know we'll go on Marshall Street we'll hang out whatever yeah. but I think Armory Square is definitely something we need to use I mean, there, more. Yeah, there are fine shops there the food's pretty great around mm -hmm. there I mean it's different than it's Jimmy John's. Or, yeah. Right exactly. Yeah. So, we, we actually went thrifting down there a couple days ago it was really cool. Right. Yeah, so I think I, yeah, I would that would be something that I would tell I guess people that are just coming in, Absolutely. use Armory Square, get off campus because Syracuse isn't as bad as some people might think. <laughs> I agree. There's a lot and, going on. And coming up, we have Noah Eagle in studio to give us this week's reality check. Stay with us. Here we go. We're going to go out there to rain. Here we get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. 
but I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Welcome back to Juice and Java. With The Bachelor over and the new season yet to start, you may need a new show to fill up your DVR, so thankfully we have no eagle. He's here to give us this week's reality check. Yeah, Jeff, another week gone means we're just one week closer to May 22nd and The Bachelorette starring Rachel Lindsay. And I'm sure you can feel my excitement through your television, but if not, it's like I'm a teenager waiting impatiently for a Justin Bieber, Nick Jonas Clash concert. However, as I promised, in the meantime, I will give you guys a reality check. And this week, it comes from the recommendation of our associate producer, Taylor Ville. And by the way, if you have a show in mind that I should check out, tweet me at Noah Eagle and I'll give it a try. So this week, it's a show that flies under the radar. Bravo presents Southern Charm. This series is already in the middle of season four, experien experiencing early success, so I figured I would check out the hype, and basically, it follows a group of wealthy individuals from Charleston, South Carolina, hence the name Southern Charm, and that's the premise of the show. Sounds dumb, right? Well, think again. I watched an episode in season two titled Unaware in Delaware, and I knew I was going to enjoy myself when 30 seconds in I heard the words, I've always been able to get away with stuff, I've never been held accountable for my actions, come out of one of the characters' mouths. I quickly realized the point of the show. Bravo is following those types of people we all know, the ones that have never had to fend for themselves, the type of people that have, were given Batmobiles for their 16th birthdays. The best way to put it, this is as if my super sweet 16 met keeping up with the Kardashians. So let's dive into some of the show's highlights. There's one character, Landon, who just divorced her now ex-husband, and she was complaining about not being able to afford her lifestyle and divorce being expensive. And since she was so stressed out with her incredibly tumultuous life, she decided it would be best to ease her pain with a small vacation to an island off the coast of Georgia. Because hey, why not? Another great line, a character named Catherine had recently changed her hair color and style. And when asked about it, she responded, a woman who changes her hair is about to change her life. I'm just not happy with how things are right now. And let's stop right there. First, if that's true, Katy Perry must be an emotional mess. Second, and more seriously, she said this while at her lavish apartment on her porch drinking tea on a nice sunny day. And that, to me, proves a clearer message. Money doesn't buy happiness. But what money did prove to buy? An attractive partner. There was a pair named Larissa and Whitney. Larissa, a successful German model and actress, and Whitney, just successful, without a great hairstyle. Look, I could go on and on about all the ins and outs of this show, but at the end of the day, to me, that was its biggest issue. It had too many angles, too much going on. I love the idea, and I thought it was entertaining, but this is not a casual watch. If you want to enjoy this show, you need to see it from square one. Overall, 6.2 out of 10, it's a solid watch. For the people in the show, it might be a Rolex. For me, more like a G-Shock. Dare I say, not so bravo, Southern Charm. Wow. <laughs> was, the, was the island off the coast, coast of Georgia anything like Bimini or whatever Bimini, it was? Uh, Bimini, yeah. Nothing ever trumps Bimini. Let me, <laughs> let me explain that to you, Jeff. But look, if I had watched the show from the start, I probably would have enjoyed it. it. It really has an entertaining factor to it. But just because I came in late, it was really just a little too confusing for me. Yeah, so they seem to just cover so many people. Like, how do you that's, follow each person's you know, path? Exactly. That's the problem. It was, it was so many characters, so many angles, and so many relationships, as you could expect from, you know, the Southern people who just expect to get whatever they want. Uh, it, it really is a good idea. I, I like the idea of it. Just, it was too confusing for me to now, follow. Now, people watch for the drama. So how yeah. was the drama in the show? Drama was pretty good. Uh, it was pretty much made up, <laughs> but it was pretty good because, I mean, the drama quality of their lives is not high, but as you heard, she was uh, complaining about divorce being expensive, right. so I'm sure you could imagine that's a little bit entertaining. Well, I think I'll have to try watching it. Poor, poor her. No, yeah. it's been a pleasure, man. Thank Absolutely. you so much. And after the break, Kayla and I will be giving our final goodbyes to Juice and Java. We'll be right back. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. <laughs> Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. 
Got it. Nope. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. And as this show comes to a close, this also marks our final episode with Juice and Java. Time to hold back the tears. That's right, Kayla. <laughs> and I've been, Gil and I have been anchoring together for the past year and have countless memories during that time, but we want to take a trip back and kind of go through or what, what happened here at Syracuse, right? I mean, yeah. you come in, you're this bushy-tailed, scared freshman, and now we turned into people that can actually talk to each other, which is fantastic. You know, I think the first time I spoke on Juice and Java, I didn't know how to read the teleprompter, and I just messed everything up. <laughs> the first time I walked into Juice and Java in general, I ran a camera, and, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. And now we've made it here, and... It's really just made a difference on my college experience. It's definitely been crazy to think how we've grown in that aspect. And I know for me, it's been just insane because we've been growing as journalists, we've been growing as anchors together. I mean, the two of us have worked very well together over the past time, which has been great. So being able to actually see that on camera has been crazy. And I see you're getting teary-eyed, which is great, Kayla, to share. I'm you not actually do love cry. me. It's, it's fantastic. Now, I do want to say, what was your favorite memory these past four years here in Syracuse, New York? Well, I think we both agreed that one of our best memories was the Duke game our freshman year. Um, I know I had a ton of fun. It was like one of the first really big games that I ever went to, and obviously Syracuse is known for sports. So that's definitely one of my favorite memories. And I've been to other games since, but my first real experience at a Syracuse game, definitely one of my favorites. I would agree. It's when, when there, was, there was the winning block or whatever. I, I remember I was on the second deck. I'd gotten there for like six hours early, and it was – just insane. I waited out in the cold. I was miserable, and then that happened, and everything was fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. life was great because we had won. We had beaten Duke, the enemy, the, the, the worst team that anybody could possibly think of. It was that will always stick with mm -hmm. me as probably being. And the, we were freshmen, and we had so many more years to look forward to, so many more games, and all of that. So, and lastly, definitely a good experience. What are you going to miss most? Ah, uh, that's a hard one. <laughs> I'm going to miss everything. Syracuse is great, and Juice and Java too. Citrus TV. It's been a really nice run. I think so. I'm going to miss the ability to just sit on my butt and watch Netflix because <laughs> now we actually have to now join we're have the to get world. Real jobs. Yeah. So it's been it's been great to have it have that happen especially here. I mean, we like I said, we've just grown so much and it's crazy to see pictures and videos and everything. So I mean, I owe this place the world. It's been yeah. so beneficial for it and especially we places like here. We can look like back here. on it when we have our real life jobs and think of it as a good time. Special shout out to Connor. Thanks for having yes, me, buddy. Yes, thanks, Connor. And that's it. That's all we have for Juice and Java this morning. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com and follow Citrus TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For the final time, I'm Jeff Slauson. And I'm Kayla Spector. Thanks for a great four years, Syracuse.